Hi, join me on this Get Ready With Me where I'm going to show you how I do my makeup when I'm working as a supporting artist for TV or movies and it's also pretty much the way I've been doing my makeup for the last two months. It's very quick, very easy. I don't use any eyeshadows or brushes and I think it's enough to define my features and definitely bring life to my face. Hi, my name is Marisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Marisa Russo, where we talk about everything beauty and lifestyle, focusing on over 50 issues. If you already saw any of my YouTube videos, thank you for returning and if you are new to my channel, welcome. For those of you that do not follow regularly my YouTube channel or my Instagram page, I work in part-time as a supporting artist or extra in uh, TV or movie productions and this is the kind of work that everyone can do. It's basically just being in the background, not speaking, doing simple things like making believe that you are working on an office or going down the street, talking or buying something and sometimes it can also require a little bit of non-speaking acting, which is quite fun. I have to say that I'm not a, an actress, um, I don't have an acting bone in my body, but I always liked playing make-believe and I love movies, of course. This is something that I always wanted to do and um, coming here to live close to London really gave me the opportunity to try it and I have continued to do it because I really enjoy it. Now, of course, the main cast, the speaking actors and actresses, have their own makeup artists exclusive for them. We don't even see them getting ready. But in all productions, and depending on the size, there are always at least from one to up to six, eight, ten makeup artists that are dedicated to what is called the crowd on the shooting days. And the makeup artists are responsible to do our hair and our makeup as well. Normally uh, the shooting days start quite early so I leave home between 5 and 6 in the morning and at that time I only apply uh, my sunscreen which is always a tinted one. Uh, in my body this summer I've been using almost exclusively the LTMD Restore Tinted One or the Daughter Sam Go Summer Tint in shade um, 02 and I apply it on my chest and my arms and legs if I'm using a dress or a skirt and I'm shooting outside in the street and in my face I've been using almost exclusively the LTMD UV Elements um, SPF 44 which is a mineral sunscreen I find that this one is not too rich for my skin and the tint in it, it's the best that I've found until now. The required amount to achieve the protection that it's stated on the tube are six pumps. So I do two layers of three each for my, for my face and for my jaw. If my hair is picked, I always place sunscreen in the ears as well. And by the time that I reach the studio or the shooting location, the sunscreen is completely set. If you ever saw any actor or actress talking about shooting, you will know that they mention very frequently the waiting times. And I have to say that they are by far the most annoying part of this kind of work and they can be very extensive indeed. So in the morning, in between checking in with the production team, getting costume ready and doing the makeup and hair, there's always plenty of time and waiting. So unless the makeup artist really wants to do my makeup, I like to do my own. And I always take with me a small purse. This is one of the Lisa Eldridge ones where I have the minimum amount of items to get myself screen ready and normally it's 
a comb, an eyelash curler, mascara, concealer, some type of product for my eyebrows, a blush. At the moment I have one of Lisa Eldridge in my purse. Two of my favorite eye pencils. These are the Victoria Beckham ones in copper, sorry, in bronze and in brown, cocoa. And some non-transferring lipstick because in UK at least in all the productions the use of masks is still required we only remove them for the shoot in itself this is from the last uh, work that I did this is the Chanel the Chanel Le Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue in 48 soft rows if the makeup artist is doing the makeup they always use some type of complexion product normally a tinted moisturizer or a foundation with medium coverage but when I do my own makeup I always use exclusively a concealer a type of concealer that I can apply on my under eye area and on the areas that I have more redness or some blotches of pigmentation so this is the forever skin correct from Dior and I use this in a shade that has a little bit of peach in it on account of my under eye area and as I said this is the way I've been doing my makeup at home I've not been using any type of foundation or tinted moisturizer only concealer on top of the sunscreen exactly like I'm doing here for you I like this concealer because as you can see I can pat it into place, it has good coverage and if I don't apply too much and I really pat it into the skin, it sets by itself without setting into my fine lines and wrinkles. A little bit on my eyelids to open up the expression and then a little bit here on the sides of the nose, here, here. And for me, the most complicated areas are here on the side. As you can see, it spreads very well and it mixes well with the sunscreen. Since the camera is not focusing on the supporting artists, this level of coverage is totally enough. Next is some type of brow product, um, normally a tinted gel or a pencil, depending on how bushy my eyebrows are. And I use exactly the same products that I use on the day-to-day -day basis. The difference is that I may go a little bit darker in the shade that I choose, just because I find that eyebrows are really, really important to define the features. So this is a Gucci one and it's actually the darkest shade the black one but it's very soft as you can see this eyebrow looks a little bit more groomed and more defined then the eyes well the makeup artists don't use eyeshadows on supporting artists or very rarely and when they use they choose a very neutral eyeshadow normally a matte one that they tend to apply all over the eyelid the other possibility which can be used in conjunction with the eyeshadow or not is eye pencils and normally they use brown or if they want to go a little bit stronger they use the black but they apply the black with a brush like this close to the eyelashes I don't take a brush I normally use a brown pencil on the top of my eyelashes and between the eyelashes and then with my fingers or with the sponge that it comes with I buff it, buff it to make it softer like this actually I'm going to bring you closer for you to see and I hope you are able to see that I'm applying not only on the outer half of the eye but also in an upward movement and then after buffing I go again with the I pencil close to the roots of the lashes. If I want a little bit more of definition, I can even pull 
with the sponge of the eye pencil the brown shadow into the eye socket and it will provide a very subtle but still effective uh, definition. If I want to add an extra oomph to my eyes I will use the bronze eye pencil from Victoria Beckham Beauty in between the lashes and sometimes if I'm in the mood also on the waterline both lower and upper then of course I'm going to the eyelash curler and I will use a very volumizing mascara like this one from Charlotte Tilbury the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes making sure I apply a very good quantity of mascara in the roots of the lashes to increase the definition I normally do not apply mascara in the bottom eyelashes I want to make sure that everything stays put and there's no possibility of smudging although I've never had this problem with this mascara and then I always always apply some type of color to my cheeks the shade can vary from a very cool pink to a very bronzy more warm shade depending on what I'm wearing I don't usually use powder products because I don't want to, to take along with me brushes and so on So the blush that I'm using is the Lisa Eldridge Enlivening, sorry, Enlivening Blush and this is in the shade Dante's Dream which I find is the perfect color for me. It's not too cool, it's not too warm, not too light, not too dark, just perfect and I can build it to the intensity that I want and I find that it also lasts very well and as you can see it's extremely easy to blend and finally I apply a lipstick and I will do a video on the transfer proof lipsticks that I find the most comfortable and for the last year and a half two years I've been testing quite a few because as I said we still need to use a mask when we are shooting so a transfer proof lipstick is essential so I'm going to use this one from Chanel which is definitely one of my favorite ones because it's really transfer proof and it's very comfortable and this is it the hair may vary in the productions it can be straight curly more or less curly picked up in a ponytail in some type of hairdo but the makeup is pretty much this eyes is always the same and the cheeks and the lips what varies is the shade it can be more rose more soft or a little bit more tan more bronzy depending on the production of course it took much more uh, time because I've been uh, talking with you and explaining the steps or the different possibilities that I use but in truth it's quite quick and uh, during the entire day I normally just blot the excess of oil that it may appear on my forehead and on the bridge of my nose I normally use some NYX blotting papers I will place below in the description all the products that I mentioned or used in this video. I also have a Shantikai uh, powder that comes with a brush um, incorporated in the, the packaging so I sometimes take that as well if I know that I'm going to have or to be um, in the sun and therefore uh, sweating a lot and I may after blotting apply a little bit in the center on the T of my face so in resume it's just about making our skin a little bit more uniform bringing a little bit of color to the cheeks and lips and defining the brows and the eyes and this is it for this video i hope you have enjoyed it and i hope you saw some little tip that you may include in your makeup routine and until next time bye